fairbanksmuseum.org and also look for other exciting programming on the front of our website and on our Facebook page or our Twitter feed as well. So without further ado, I will turn things over to Bo Harris and we're excited to kick off this series together. Hello, uh, hello hi everyone. Um, welcome to uh, this intro to um, composting and um, we'll uh, jump right in, I guess. Um, so uh, looking at what, uh, um, well, first I'm gonna share my screen here. I have a few uh, pictures to show everyone. Uh, so uh, looking at what is compost um, or what is composting. Composting is the process of, um, it's a natural process of uh, decomposing and recycling organic um, material and matter um, into a humus rich soil amendment known as compost. Um, you might not know what humus is. It's uh, the, basically the, all the organic mat matter that you find in, uh, in the soil. So if you go walking out in the woods, you look down you see all the leaves and sticks and things on the surface. If you dig down a little bit, you'll see finer and finer particles of that. Um, and eventually it just all breaks down into uh, some of the base um, components. And um, so it's basically nature's way of recycling all this organic matter uh, into uh, something that can be used um, by plants um, in, uh, looks like there's a, maybe a question. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to remind you to make your PowerPoint full screen, Bo. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. There we go. Okay, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, reasons why you, uh, it's a good thing to uh, compost. Um, it, uh, one is it reduces the amount of waste that um, ends up going into landfills. Um, and uh, there are different numbers about um, how much uh, organic waste is uh, makes up um, trash, but between one third and two thirds of trash is actually compostable material, and uh, it can reduce the amount that your trash might smell, and um, could save you money by not having to uh, buy fertilizer or as much fertilizer maybe reducing the um, amount you have to pay to get um, rid of your trash. Um, and you can also use it to uh, improve your soils in your lawn or gardens and um, help out your, the plants you're trying to grow. And, um, and let's see, uh, it can re help reduce global warming. Uh, the, all the or organic matter that gets into landfills uh, tends to break down in an um, anaerobic way, uh, which means without oxygen and produces a lot of methane, which is a much more, uh, um, has a much higher greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide, which is what's more produced when things are composted uh, aerobically. And um, you can not have to buy as much peat-based compost, which is uh, helps um, with the, uh, <coughs> um, Help, helps preserve peat bogs. And um, yeah, so in this first slide I have here, you can see on the left um, all the food scraps in this picture um, that are came right out of somebody's kitchen and are now in their compost pile. And they will all break down with the help of um, all the critters uh, in the soil, the microorganisms and worms and bugs and things and produce uh, this compost, which is um, very nutrient rich and has lots of, of benefits. Um, so uh, here we see the cycle of um, how things can, can progress and it's a very circular um, system. Uh, things go round and round. Uh, you have your food and then it goes into the compost, the microorganisms break it down and um, then you can use it to grow uh, new food and that you can then eat um, and it goes round and round. Um, so today we'll be talking mostly about um, cold composting, um, which uh, doesn't take a lot of work um, or doesn't have to take a lot of work. 
which is convenient for and good for most people who are will be doing composting. Um, and we'll touch on some uh, some others a little bit a little bit later. Um, so uh, depending on where you live, you have several options for how you might go about composting. Um, the easiest and simplest way is to simply choose a spot out in your um, lawn somewhere um, near your garden or just in the corner of your lawn where you can um, pile everything that all your scraps and um, it, the organisms that are naturally in the soil will come up, find their way up into it and start um, breaking it down. And um, cold comp composting tends to, um, can take up, you know, eight to 12 months to fully um, break down. Um, and if, if you don't do anything with it. Um, and so it doesn't really take a lot of time or effort. Um, you can see in this image, um, some of this person has put some uh, chicken wire around their pile, which helps contain it a little bit and keep it from sprawling. Um, not that that's necessarily a, a big risk, but it really just does um, can help with um, containing it a little bit. Um, if you live in a more uh, developed area or more urban area, you might um, want to or need to um, have a more enclosed system. Um, and there are other uh, um, uh, bins that you can use, uh, that you can purchase like these. Um, the one, this black one is uh, sort of is one of the more standard types with a lid on the top that where you put all the stuff, um, all your scraps and yard wastes and uh, then doors on the bottom here where you can remove any finished compost after it's done breaking down. Uh, this one green one on the, on the right is one called a tumbler uh, bin and it's uh, one where you might have to, uh, where you put all your scraps, we might have to add some soil or some other um, compost that you've done already to get it started to get the organisms in there. Um, and then you uh, turn it around, which helps with the um, aeration of it, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, in a bit, um, the, the aeration part. Um, and uh, one of the benefits of having enclosed systems like this is um, it helps, could help with uh, potential for odors, not that there are a lot um, with composting necessarily. Um, and it can also help keep animals away um, or out of your compost bins. Um, and um, there are other kinds of uh, bins or containment systems like these. This one on the left is a, a pre-bought one that is made out of wood. These ones, this one on the right, these are made out of uh, old pallets, which um, are sort of uh, pre nicely pre-made uh, walls for, for a bin. Um, although you have to watch out for the nails, of course, especially as these start to break down, which being wood, they uh, eventually will. Um, uh, and, uh, okay, so uh, yes, Drew? <laughs> Just a question from somebody on YouTube. Um, okay. back to, I guess to your last slide, although this one works well too. Okay. People are just wondering, are there types of wood that are better or, you know, should it be pressure treated, that kind of stuff when you're thinking about the fact that the soil might be used later right. uh, for food and that kind of stuff? Or this yeah. Kind of, say? Um, that is, that's a good question. Uh, Woods like cedar will break down less quickly and because um, they have some natural um, resistance to uh, microbes and breaking down. Uh, woods like pressure treated you should uh, avoid because of the uh, all the things that are used to treat the wood uh, it could leach into your um, compost and um, then get into the plants and could poison your plants and could not be so good for if you're growing food with a compost. Yes? Um, so just another question that came along, and there's a lot of different designs here that you're showing, both in how the wood uh, <clears throat> containers are built, 
but also the types of materials. Do you, is there one that you would recommend that you think works best either in terms of design or material or any of those attributes? Um, well, uh, I've used ones like this black bin here before, um, and not exactly this type, but uh, similar ones that have a lid on the top where you open it, which provides an easy access for adding the materials. And then the, um, the one I used, which was similar to this, it was easy to dig out the bottom. Um, uh, so I, I personally like this one uh, for a uh, sort of off the shelf one. Uh, I've um, worked with somebody who made one uh, once. Don't remember exactly, and I don't have the plans for it, but there's no set way that you have to do it. And you can see in this slide, the bottom right here, uh, they've even just piled up uh, hay bales um, in a square to, to contain it. Um, so there, there are really lots of ways you can, can do it. And you can search online and find lots of different plans. Um, when I was uh, growing up uh, as a kid, we had a pile like the first one that I showed with uh, just chicken wire around it which really does uh, help contain it without having to do um, much or maintain much with a, a bin. Um, and it's easy to set up and then take down if you wanna move and set up another pile somewhere else. Um, so I hope that answered um, all your questions at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, the easiest way, again, is to just uh, set up a, a basic pile where you dump all your stuff. And if you're just trying to get rid of your food scraps in a more environmentally friendly way, um, and maybe save a little money, setting up a pile somewhere, just letting it go. It doesn't matter how long it takes so much, and um, it'll just go back into the system and, um, and be fine. Uh, requires not very much maintenance at all. Um, if you wanna actually start to use uh, the compost in a garden or on your lawn or for trees uh, to augment the soil, uh, you might wanna have a bin where it's more contained and doesn't escape at all um, or much at all. Um, and uh, you might wanna do a little, have it go a little more quickly, which is, um, uh, uh, let's see, if you start turning your soil, your compost, that gets it to be um, more aerated and helps the organisms get that oxygen they need and move along. And you could also consider uh, hot composting, which is a very quick, relatively very quick um, method for, um, you know, getting rid of your, your food scraps and your yard waste. And it also has benefits of killing uh, most or all um, weed seeds that you, you might have. And um, some diseased plants it might um, kill a lot of those, it'll kill a lot of those diseases as well that um, the cold, colder composting uh, won't do. Um, and we'll get talk about that a little bit more, um, a little bit later, later on. So um, a little more specifically on how to compost. Um, again, at the most basic level, you can just throw it out in a pile and it'll decom decompose. Um, and one thing is to put your compost pile or your bin in a place where it's convenient to get to. So convenient to your uh, kitchen, if you're using primarily food scraps and or convenient to your um, your garden where, where you also generate material to, um, that will, you want to compost and have to deal with. Um, so it could be even be just in the corner of your, your garden or some people even um, set up raised beds where they'll rotate, they'll put compost in there and then things to compost, cover them, let them sit for a year while they're growing in growing things in other uh, beds and then they rotate around. So then they have some very good enriched soil uh, once everything is broken down and then they can start composting in another bed uh, later on. Um, so you can see um, 
in this slide, um, it shows how about layering your um, your uh, materials. So you can see carbon and nitrogen listed here. Um, carbon materials are the dry things like leaves and sticks and um, pine cones even, and um, that you need to help um, absorb moisture and things like that. The, and the nitrogen um, rich things are things like your food scraps and your uh, freshly mowed um, grass clippings um, that are wetter. And uh, they're also called the green materials because they haven't dried out yet. Um, and you'll want to layer those um, or the better way, more quicker, more, the quicker way is to layer those in your compost uh, pile or your bin, um, which will uh, allow the uh, organisms that are doing the eating of, of your materials to uh, get the, all the stuff that they need and um, it'll just speed it along. And the twigs and sticks uh, will um, help um, air, get the air in there. They'll, cre they'll create little air pockets um, in your compost pile and um, they will allow that air to come in uh, without having to turn it so much. In this image, they show it just the twigs just on the bottom. What I actually do is, um, I'll, since I don't use my compost, I just keep adding to it. I intersperse the twigs and sticks throughout um, the pile. So every so often, I'll throw a few more tw sticks and twigs in and then add more of my other materials. Um, if you're doing some more where you're going to use the compost, um, you'll want to not not do it exactly like that, but um, have it more like this, where it's the twigs on the bottom. Um, so uh, let's see. <clears throat> and um, these layers, you'll want them to be between two and four inches thick um, before you switch to the other. So the nitrogen would be two to four inches, then the carbon two to four inches, and so on until you get to um, the top of your bin or um, as much as you want to do in that, that particular pile. Um, and I, I think I mentioned a little bit ago, um, air is very important for the whatever organisms are in there doing the breaking down. Um, and so not only having the twigs, which create the air pockets, but turning your pile can be a good way to um, get that air into the, into the system that is the pile of, of compost. So just with a, a shovel or a pitchfork, mix things around every um, couple of weeks, two to four weeks, and um, that will help uh, not only help the organisms, but it'll help speed things along as well. Um, and um, it, one thing that some people do is instead of twigs on the bottom, they'll put a pallet down on the bottom, which does very the same sort of thing. It helps get the air into the system. Um, but uh, again, you have to watch out for the nails and the bigger uh, pieces of wood, of course, take a lot longer to break down. And um, so that's some, something to remember with pal using pallets as, as well as any larger sticks or branches that you might have, um, is that those do take a lot longer and you might have to sift them out if, you, if everything else is broken down and you want to use your compost in your garden or on your lawn or whatever. Um, so just that's just one thing to, to remember. They will, all wood will eventually break down. It's just that the bigger pieces will take a little bit longer. Um, and going back to one of my um, previous slides uh, here, one thing that other thing that people, some people do is they'll set up a, a three bin or a three com container system They'll start in one, and when that gets pretty full, they'll let it start resting and fin just finish composting and breaking down. And they'll start adding stuff to the um, next one. Um, and when that one's full, they uh, move to the third one. And then by that time, your first one, which you've not been adding to for a while, 
um, and it could be take up to a year for things to fully break down. You, that one first one should be ready to use whatever compost is in there should be fully ready to use. And then the middle one is uh, resting and finishing off. You're adding to the third. And then by the time the third one's full, the first one's probably going to be empty and you can uh, keep going like that. Um, so uh, some troubleshooting um, things that might come up. Um, if your compost starts to smell, that's something that a lot of people um, uh, have concerns about, that it is a really smelly sort of operation. It doesn't have to be. Um, if you get those mixtures right um, of uh, carbon and nitrogen, and uh, it really won't have much of a smell at all, and especially if you contain it in a, some kind of container. But if it does, uh, it's probably too wet. You've either added too much water or it might be after a heavy rain, or you've added too much of the nitrogen green materials that are the food scraps and fresh um, clippings, like, like uh, grass clippings. Um, and it's started to be uh, more of an an anaerobic um, uh, system, and which means without the oxygen. And so uh, a couple of solutions, you can add more of the uh, brown uh, carbon rich material, which will absorb some of the moisture and um, cover up some of the smells. Uh, yes, I see that there's a question. <laughs> yeah, one question. Um, somebody's asking, what do you recommend as the best carbon rich material? They're talking about leaves or other things. Yeah, and I, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Um, leaves are great. Um, and sticks are uh, great, especially the smaller twigs. Um, and dry grass um, clippings, uh, if you let it dry out a bit, that can be, uh, especially in, you don't want to add too much grass because it can start to get matted and actually hold moisture in. But um, so you'll, if you have a lot of grass, you'll probably want to space that out a little bit. But the dry grass can also be a good carbon material. But leaves are, are sort of one of the really great ones. Um, uh, I have here some uh, uh, wood shavings that are, um, and sawdust is actually another uh, really good one. Um, if you are a woodworker, um, as long as it's not, um, <clears throat> okay, Drew, thanks. <laughs> um, as long as it's not uh, pressure treated, again, um, so moving along, uh, if your uh, compost isn't doing much, like it's uh, taking too long to compost, it's probably too dry. You wanna add some moisture so you could spray it down with some uh, water or you could add more of those um, nitrogen um, rich green materials and uh, mix, mix them all in. And um, that's something else with this pile that might be a little smelly is if you um, turn it, it can get the air in there and dry it out a little bit and um, get the um, aerobic uh, microbes working um, some more. Um, another possible um, problem is um, if you uh, have flies, especially fruit flies, um, you can bury the green materials deeper into your pile. Um, you can add, um, which is probably the best solution for that. You can also try turning it. Um, if you're attracting unwanted animals, um, there you might uh, it might be smelly, and you can do some of those other solutions we talked about. You can also, um, if you're putting in meat or dairy products, it, um, that might be attracting them. And generally, those are not recommended to go into a compost pile because of the potential to attract unwanted animals, but also. Um, especially with the uncooked or potentially undercooked meat products, uh, the potential to spread uh, diseases. Um, so those are a few of the um, potential um, troubleshooting things. Um, so going back to what can be composted, um, let's see, grass clippings are great, uh, things like leaves. Um, I'm gonna um, stop sharing my screen for a minute. Things like uh, leaves, uh, which are everywhere are great. Um, 
I have here a piece of uh, birch bark, which is a very dry sort of material, uh, pine cones. Um, and spruce and fir cones are very dry, good material, um, wood shavings. So those are all examples, and, and sticks, of course, are all examples of the brown materials. Um, apple cores uh, and citrus peels are more of the green materials. Other fruit scraps um, are great. Uh, coffee grounds, uh, straw and hay are, are good for brown more brown materials. Uh, weeds are good. If, if, if they've gone to seed, uh, the seeds won't necessarily break down. So you might have, uh, if you use them, you might have an issue with the seeds then having a very good medium to grow in and even being more prolific um, if you put this uh, weeds in that have already gone to seed. Um, for paper products, um, Things like paper towel and toilet paper rolls are good. Um, uh, you want to probably stay away from um, bleached materials, um, like chlorine bleached materials, which can, when they break down, uh, the chlorine residues or whatever can produce dioxins, and uh, which are kind of toxic um, and not good to have in your compost, especially if you're using it in uh, your garden. Uh, things that you should not use are human or pet waste um, for smells and for potential for diseases to spread, um, coal ashes for toxicity, um, certain pernicious weeds like um, uh, ragwort and Japanese knotweed and giant hogweeds, which are very hard to kill and could actually be spread if you use them. Uh, meat, bones, and dairy. Uh, some people do, but um, it's generally recommended that you do not um, because of some of the um, reasons I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and the chlorine bleach uh, paper, which will break down, but it, um, it has potential for some of those um, dioxins and toxin, toxins to get into your, your compost. Um, Uh, so um, what to do with your compost, you can spread it in your garden, you can use it to help um, build up your beds, especially if you're um, building new beds, you can mix it into just your basic garden beds or raised beds. Um, you can use it when you're transplanting to give your plants a bit of a jump start. Um, and um, you can use it as a, a mulch. <coughs> And um, around trees, you want to do it around the drip line um, is, and not build it up around the base of the tree like this. Um, around the drip line will really get it to go down into where it can be used, uh, all the nutrients that you can you find in composting. And um, um, you can use it to improve your, your lawn. If you're um, planting new grass, you can work it into the soil beforehand, or you can spread it on top of your, your lawn and it will um, go down into the soil. Um, and uh, for more advanced gardeners or composters, you can make compost tea by putting this, some compost in a uh, tightly woven uh, sack or bag and putting it into a, a big bin filled with uh, water and uh, uh, it'll leach out and make this very nu uh, nutrient rich tea that you can use, you can pour on your, your gardens. Um, <clears throat> so um, so uh, one uh, in Vermont, we have, uh, there's a was a law that went into effect um, in, uh, I'm just pulling up a the website for it, the universe, Vermont's Universal Recycling Law that went into effect um, in July of 2014. And um, this is their webpage. Um, you can go and find a lot of um, recycling and composting um, resources and updates, or not, well, updates, but also information about the law. Um, 
has this very good chart about um, what can be, what goes into uh, Vermont's trash. This is 2018, uh, but I'm sure it's still very much like this. So a lot of it can be recycled, like the, this paper and plastic and metal and glass. And then this 24%, uh, that's almost a quarter, can be, most of that could probably be composted and um, get, keep that out of the landfills. Um, and they have this timeline here of, um, it was a very, a st very staged sort of um, <clears throat> uh, implementation. You can see this this July of this year, 2020, uh, is the final stage. And one thing is uh, food scraps are going to be banned from landfills um, officially. And um, so composting at home is uh, one good way if you have the space and time to, to do it. Um, there are uh, also ways, places that you'll be able to take in other uh, no organizations that do composting um, and then in, in turn sell compost for um, use in gardeners, gardening. Um, so um, you can take a look at that um, when you have time. And um, the last thing I was going to touch on is um, Vermont uh, Master Composter course, um, which I did several years ago. And it's um, over the course of a couple of months, it looks like they've changed uh, the course uh, you know, layout a little bit since I did it. But um, it's uh, over the course of a couple of months now, um, one hour sessions where you learn all kinds of things and they bring in different experts who have been composting for a long time. and um, they go over all different kinds of um, composting and um, issues with composting that we didn't have time to do uh, today. But um, it's uh, a good, good place to get some information and a great um, course to do uh, if you, again, if you have the time, of course, and um, are looking for more information and to get more experience about it. Yes, Drew? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe one question to end on. Okay. Um, person asking, I think they can see now in the website that it does cost a little money for this course. Do they yes, have it any, does. Do they have any, you know, support for people who maybe want to enroll from different backgrounds? Um, I don't remember from when, when I did it. Um, I think they, I think they did. Um, although you, I see here, um, there's a request assistance um, thing. Um, so I, I'm not sure uh, what that is. The best way to uh, find out about that would be to um, give them a call and um, ask about that. So there, here's the number down here at the bottom um, where you could call about that and an, an email address as well. Where you, I'm sure they'd be happy to to answer that question um, better than I can. Yeah, thanks, Bo. That was great. And um, and definitely, we'll be posting these links to these websites that Bo was just sharing with you on our website where we post this video recording of this class. Um, of course, I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, this is going to be a regular series for DIY projects at home in Vermont. So stay tuned. Check our Google Calendar schedule, which you can find at fairbanksmuseum.org. And we look forward to having you join us in the future as well. And I just wanted to give a really warm thanks, of course, to Bo Harris, our collections manager at the Fairbanks Museum. Um, doesn't always get to get out in front of you guys, but I know he was excited to teach on this topic today. Yeah. So well, thank you. you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Have a great day.